No other country on earth faces what the Philippines does. 110 million people scattered across 7,641 islands, living at the mercy of colliding tectonic plates and relentless superstorms. It tops every global risk index, struck by typhoons, earthquakes and eruptions year after year. But why can't this nation escape nature's fury and what's still lurking beneath its beautiful surface? The answer begins at the crossroads of catastrophe. Across the vast blue expanse of the Western Pacific, the Philippines rises as a chain of 7,641 islands, each one a fragment of land shaped by restless forces. Here, more than 110 million people make their homes, families, farmers, fishermen, woven into coastlines and valleys that stretch from the northern tip of Luzon to the southern reaches of Mindanao. The majority live close to the water's edge, where the sea is both lifeblood and lurking threat. Cities like Manila, Cebu and Davao bustle with life, yet even the smallest barangays are never far from the next hazard. Typhoons sweep in with little warning, flooding rice fields and city streets alike. Earthquakes rattle the ground beneath schools and markets. Volcanoes dot the horizon, silent for years, then suddenly awake. In this place, disaster is not a distant possibility, but a constant companion, woven into daily routines, shaping where people build, how they prepare, and even the stories they pass down. No other nation faces this unique collision of natural dangers where every island and every person stands at the crossroads of catastrophe. Deep beneath the surface, the Philippines sits at the crossroads of four enormous tectonic plates, the Eurasian, Pacific, Sunda, and Philippine Sea Plates. These slabs of the Earth's crust are in constant motion, grinding and colliding with each other in slow, relentless shifts. The Sunda Plate pushes beneath the Philippine Sea Plate at a rate of about 8 centimeters each year, roughly the speed fingernails grow. Over centuries, this steady movement bends, cracks and folds the land, creating a tangled network of faults and deep ocean trenches. It's this meeting point that gives rise to the archipelago's mountains, valleys and volcanoes, but also to its most dangerous hazards. Every earthquake felt in a crowded city, every volcano looming on the horizon, traces back to these invisible forces at work beneath the islands. The ground may seem solid, but in the Philippines, it's always on the move, shaped and reshaped by the restless plates below. This ongoing collision doesn't just build landscapes, it stores up enormous energy, waiting to be released without warning. For the people living above, these movements are the hidden engines behind the country's most powerful and unpredictable disasters. Just 100 kilometers off the bustling coast of Luzon, the Manila Trench carves a hidden scar beneath the West Philippine Sea. Scientists warn that this fault is capable of unleashing earthquakes as powerful as magnitude 8 or 9, enough to send a wall of water racing towards shore. In the worst case models, a tsunami could strike the heart of Metro Manila in as little as 15 to 30 minutes. That window is barely enough time for a warning, let alone an orderly evacuation. 13 million people live in the direct impact zone, many unaware that the ground beneath their feet holds such danger. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOLCS, has spent years urging coastal barangays and city leaders to prepare for this scenario. Their drills and outreach campaigns often meet skepticism or are hampered by limited resources, but the risk remains. In a city where traffic clogs the roads and neighborhoods crowd the shoreline, every minute counts when the sea begins to rise. For Manila, the threat is not distant or theoretical. It is a race against time, written into the landscape itself. On the eastern edge of the archipelago, the Philippine Trench plunges more than 10,500 meters below the surface, so deep that Mount Everest could disappear inside. This immense chasm stretches for over 1,300 kilometers along the country's Pacific coast, where the Philippine Sea Plate slides beneath the Eurasian Plate, building up energy year after year. Scientists warn that a sudden release could trigger a magnitude 9 or greater earthquake rivaling the 2011 Tohoku disaster in Japan that killed nearly 18,000 people and unleashed a tsunami towering up to 40 meters. Along the Philippines' eastern seaboard, the time between a quake and the arrival of a tsunami could be as little as 20 to 40 minutes. That's barely enough for a warning to reach communities scattered along the coast, 
from small fishing villages to crowded provincial capitals, the sheer scale of the Philippine Trench means that no part of the eastern shoreline is truly safe. Here the threat is measured not just in distance or depth, but in the relentless accumulation of seismic energy beneath the sea, a danger as vast and silent as the trench itself. On a humid August night in 1976, the ground beneath the Moro Gulf in Mindanao began to convulse. A magnitude 8.1 earthquake struck just after midnight, waking thousands from their sleep. Within half an hour, a tsunami swept over coastal villages, leaving little time for escape. Survivors remember the darkness, the roar of water, and the confusion as families scrambled for higher ground. More than 5,000 lives were lost in a single night. Entire communities erased before dawn. Radio operators sent desperate messages as boats and houses vanished into the sea. For many in Mindanao, the memory of that night lingers as a warning. The Cotabato Trench, responsible for the disaster, still runs beneath the region, its threat undiminished. Cities like Davao, Cotabato and General Santos remain exposed, their populations larger and their coastlines even more crowded than in 1976. Scientists warn that the southern faults are far from quiet and the lesson from the Moro Gulf endures. Nature rarely gives a second chance. Volcanoes stand watch across the Philippines, their quiet slopes hiding a sudden deadly power. In June 1991, Mount Pinatubo unleashed one of the largest eruptions of the 20th century. Over 800 lives lost, entire towns buried in ash, and a plume so vast it cooled global temperatures by half a degree. Nearly three decades later, Taal Volcano erupted with little warning, sending half a million people fleeing through thick ash and darkness. In the chaos, boatmen risked everything, steering across the lake to rescue families trapped on Volcano Island. Mayon, with its near-perfect cone, erupts almost every decade, its pyroclastic flows racing down to threaten villages below. For those living in the shadow of these giants, the Earth's core is never far from the surface. Each year, the Western Pacific churns out more storms than any other ocean, and the Philippines sit squarely in their path. 20 to 25 named typhoons form over these waters annually, with up to nine making landfall on the islands. The most powerful storms leave scars that last for generations. In 2013, Super Typhoon Haiyan brought winds of 315 kilometers per hour and a seven meter storm surge, killing over 6,300 people and sweeping away entire neighborhoods in eastern Visayas. Eight years later, Super Typhoon Rai struck with 195 km per hour winds, affecting 11 million people and causing $1 billion in damage. On average, five to six typhoons each year reach category three or higher, battering coastlines with wind, rain, and waves. For many Filipinos, the sound of a distant storm is a warning that disaster could arrive overnight. In Navotas, where the sea presses against crowded homes and the air hums with the threat of the next storm, a barangay captain checks the emergency radio and counts life vests stacked in a plastic bin. The Philippine Sea now holds more heat than ever. Surface temperatures average above 26.5 degrees Celsius, fueling storms that grow faster and stronger with each passing year. Scientists warn that by 2050, peak typhoon winds could be 20% fiercer, but preparation is woven into daily life. Children rehearse evacuation drills in schoolyards. Families keep go bags by the door. Neighbors, fishermen, vendors, elders, watch the horizon together, ready to help one another at the first sign of danger. In the face of a future shaped by warming seas, the spirit of Bayanihan, community solidarity, remains the strongest defense. Each year, the Philippines faces an average of 20 typhoons, more than any other country, and remains ranked the most disaster-prone nation on Earth, according to the 2025 World Risk Index. This documentary has shown how the collision of four tectonic plates, the presence of 24 active volcanoes, and the threat from the Manila and Philippine trenches put millions at risk from earthquakes and tsunamis. The 1991 eruption of Pinatubo and the devastation of Typhoon Haiyan are not isolated events, but part of an ongoing pattern shaped by geography and climate. Despite decades of study, scientists cannot predict the exact timing of the next mega-thrust earthquake or super-typhoon. 
What is clear is that warming oceans are fueling stronger storms and coastal populations remain exposed. Community resilience, seen in widespread drills and the Bayanihan spirit, has become a necessity, not a choice. The evidence shows that while the Philippines cannot escape its natural hazards, understanding them is the key to survival. Surrounded by disaster, the nation endures through vigilance and unity.